Hello and welcome to this third Sunday of Advent, a Sunday dedicated to joy. And it is a joy to be with you. Even if we are separated by distance, we are gathered together under the power of the Holy Spirit. So God bless you. I uh, did want to make sure that you saw in both the paper and online versions of our newsletter that our church council did decide what we thought they would, that there will be no in-person Christmas Eve services this year. And as sad as that is, we recognize why with the infection rates skyrocketing right now. Uh, and we can celebrate at the very same time that there will be uh, recorded versions of Christmas Eve services. You can find those uh, services on our website at the virtual chapel or on our YouTube page. And we really like you to participate in that service. They're going to have wonderful music and all kinds of special things, but we'd love to have you send in photos of you and you and your family or you and your dog or whoever it is that you want to see in that standing next to your Advent wreath lit uh, and take a photo and send it in to us so we can incorporate that on our Christmas Eve just to remind one another uh, who it is that's part of our worshiping community. And by the way, uh, while you're at our website on the virtual chapel, you'll notice that there are a couple of other options there. One is a blue Christmas celebration. Uh, this is created and provided for those of us who really struggle during this season of the year with loneliness or depression or anxiety. This season is hard on many. And that service, that blue Christmas service, is just a recognition of that difficulty and reminding us that God is still with us. So I encourage you to, to look at that. And premiering today, a service of lessons and carols where our chancel choir and handbells will offer you some beautiful Christmas music. It's available today. So many different options for us to continue to open our heart to God's presence during this Advent season. So let us prepare ourselves for worship. preaches the good news of deliverance, proclaiming that the Lord has sent him to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, and to comfort all who mourn. We are all oppressed by our tendency to serve self rather than God. But Christ calls and leads us in another direction. As we are released from all that binds us, as we create more and more room for God in our hearts, minds, words, actions, and in all aspects of our lives, we experience greater and greater joy. Today, we light the third candle in our Advent wreath. 
the rose candle, the candle of joy. We are reminded of why Jesus came into the world and promised that to the extent we strive to align our path with his, we will experience deeper and deeper joy. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, mm -hmm. and the darkness did not overcome it. Shine, holy light, shine. Amen. I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Most loving and holy God, we pray for your church around the world. In the midst of so much division, may we be one in you. And grant that every member of the church be able to humbly serve you in all that they do, that your name will be glorified by all people everywhere, that they will see us and experience not division or brokenness, but they'll find some sense of peace and comfort and compassion because of the grace you've poured into our lives. We pray for all those who govern nations around the world, who hold authority over others, that there would be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake here at First United Methodist. Let our programs and ministries, even in the midst of a pandemic and a quarantine, honor and glorify you. Draw us together, whether it's through Zoom meetings online or just phone calls to one another as we care for those who are homebound. God, instill in us an awareness of how very important it is that we stay connected, especially to those who are struggling during this holiday season. We pray for your compassion on those who suffer, who grieve, who are experiencing trouble or depression. May they be delivered from their distress. And God, we give you thanks that even in the midst of this, what can be a very dark season, there are signs all around us that you love us and that you will not abandon us. We give you thanks for all the good things that surround us, the good gifts of life. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good day, First Church Oak Ridge. My name is Troy Forster. Uh, it's such an honor to be with you today and uh, I have such fond memories of being at this church. I served as associate pastor at First Church from 2006 to 2016 and I'm so grateful for this church and all the ways that uh, you were gracious to a young pastor. And so thank you uh, for being a light in my life and for allowing me to share God's word with you today. Our scripture lesson today is 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verses 16 through 24. I invite you to follow along with the reading of this today's word. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. So here we are on the third Sunday of Advent, a Sunday dedicated to joy. Uh, and how appropriate that our reading for the scripture this day has that amazing admonition in it, rejoice always. Now, you know as well as I do that the word rejoice is the verb form of joy. It's the uh, present tense imperative for all you who are English majors. Yay! In other words, it's the command form. Rejoice means be joyful now. <laughs> I remember reading this passage as a young man 
And even then, back when I had tons of youthful optimism and actually long flowing hair, can I point out, that even then I knew that something didn't sound right about that passage. Rejoice always. Is that possible? You see, I was equating joy with happiness, and I knew better than to think that people could be happy all the time. And while I was, I was right about that, it's impossible to be happy all the time, I was very wrong about joy. More about that in just a moment. Um, our reading is from the ending of Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. It's the first time he wrote, so it's called First Thessalonians. And scholars tell us that this is the oldest letter we have in the Bible from Paul. So most likely, this was his first attempt to communicate to that congregation that he had founded. Which means that our reading, which is at the very end of that letter, was the first time that Paul probably tried to wrap up what he wanted this new, fledgling, young church to hear. The first time he'd already dealt with their pastoral issues, and he... And he wanted to give them something, to leave them with something of significance, some statement that they could rest their faith on. Well, see, I find that fascinating because what we learn in our reading is that he begins this ending to the letter with three very particular admonitions that all talk about how to stay connected to God. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. That last part, the give thanks in all circumstances, that's hard. It's hard for me. I have no doubt that you struggle with it occasionally, right? It's really difficult. But compared to rejoice always, at least it's doable, right? It's the same thing with with pray without ceasing. I mean, I think we get that part, right? That pray without ceasing doesn't mean that we have to continually be on our knees with our hands clasped, talking to God, sharing our prayers. No, God... Paul expects us to be in an attitude of prayer all the time, aware of God's presence. And again, that's not easy, but it's at least doable. Is it possible to rejoice always? Is that even doable? Well, the answer turns out to be, surprisingly, yes. And I'm sure you already saw this coming, but what I was wrong about is that when I equated joy with happiness, it takes us down the wrong path. Happiness is having someone buy you an ice cream cone. That's your favorite flavor. Joy is recognizing in that moment that there is someone in the world that loves you enough, that cares about you enough, that they just want to give you a treat. Happiness is watching your favorite movie at home, right? Joy is recognizing that you have a home where you can do things like watch a movie, you can, you can snuggle up, you can stay warm when it's cold outside and dry when it's raining. Joy is the result of being aware of God's good gifts. And, and best of all, the gift of God's presence. People who are joyful don't let the negative experiences, the negative moments in every circumstance, keep them from seeing the good that's there as well. Even when the, sometimes the only good is the fact that God won't abandon us. So, while well, again, it's not easy to rejoice always, to maintain that big picture focus on the grace-filled world and God's presence. It is at least doable. Uh, it t- times of difficulty, in times of illness or <laughs> pandemic or maybe just the sadness of isolation, it's really easy to focus on the bad, the disappointing, the things that are hurtful, things that we miss. But, but we are a people of, of incarnation. We believe that God hasn't given up on us, that God comes for us. We are a people of, of hope and peace and, yes, even joy. We are a people that choose to see God's presence, choose to see the blessings in this moment. Paul, by the way, if you go back and read all of 1 Thessalonians, what you recognize is that this church has lost a few people to death recently. And so they're suffering, they're grieving. And Paul is reassuring them about those deaths. And so when he ends this letter saying, rejoice 
always. It's Paul's way of saying, we are a people of, of resurrection as well. It's, way, it's his way of reminding us that God in Jesus Christ has overcome even death. So even while we grieve and suffer the, the pain and sorrow, the loss of people we love, even in that moment, we can find joy. Joy, it turns out, is all about where we choose to focus. Now, I hope that you can see that all of those imperatives that Paul offers, right? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. I hope you see now how they're all interconnected. They're all inviting us in, in various ways to remain open to the presence of God in our life and trust that that same presence is going to be with us into the future, in good times and in bad times. All of Paul's other exhortations in that reading that we had uh, emerge out of that foundation of joy, that awareness of God, so that statements like, do not quench the spirit and hold fast to what is good, those are ways that we, as a community of faith, being led by God's Spirit, it's how we work through the difficulties of life, how we deal with tensions and struggles, how we figure out what ministries to provide to the world. They're all based on that same idea of being aware of God's presence. Because you see, the message for us on this third Sunday of Advent is that we can choose joy. We can choose, no matter what our circumstances, to stay focused on the fact that God is present, that God came for us in Jesus Christ, and that our future is secure because God will never abandon us. Now, for our last song, we have the perfect example of what it means to be a joyful person. The Magnificat of Mary, Jesus' mother, uh, is all about not just some young woman who flippantly says, yes, you know, I, I accept who you are, God, in my life. This is about a woman who, at 14 years old, give or take, is living in a culture that could literally stone her to death because of her pregnancy. And yet, in that moment, she has a fiancé that has chosen not to abandon her. She has a cousin, Elizabeth, that welcomes her and, and receives the news of her pregnancy with joy. And she has a God that she trusts will not leave her. And that's why out of Mary erupts the most perfect statement as she begins her Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Let us strive in the weeks ahead to become more like Mary and choose to see the joy that is in our lives. Good news of great joy for every woman, every man. This will be a sign to you. Born in Bethlehem, come and worship. Do not be afraid. A company of angels, glory in the highest, and on the earth peace among those on whom its favor rests. Come. Do not be afraid. 
Here we are three Sundays into Advent, knowing that soon and very soon Christmas Eve will be upon us. These are the weeks when we struggle to receive all the good news that God has for us, that we can be a people of hope, peace, and yes, joy. And so, go forward through the rest of this Advent season, and may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.